Hey, Late Fees Besties! The No More Late Fees podcast is now available on Patreon. Subscribe to receive exclusive content, including Ask Me Anything, playlists, live streams, bonus clips, and more. Check us out at patreon.com forward slash no more late fees. Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle. And we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees re-watching some of our favorite movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. And Danielle. Yeah. Today is double special. You want to know why? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> we have special guest Morgan Bartell with us. Yay! Yay! Happy to be here. Yay. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> and it is our 20th episode. Man, it's fun. Bye. It is. <laughs> <laughs> That's huge. Yeah, I mean, we are so excited about that because our goal was just, I think there was like an article that most podcasts don't make it past their 10th episode. So we're like, huh, let's just make it past 10. <laughs> So now, I mean, we're really in it, Jackie. We can't, we can't like stop this train now. Oh, we are. We have almost everything planned out through the rest of the year. We have a ton of guests coming up. I'm super excited. Yeah, I, I, I my mind is blown. Like honestly, it's just every day. I'm just so thankful that we get to just do this together um, as besties. And then we've just met so many great people and people are saying yes to join us. So I don't even (laughs) know what to say. It's just shocking and really nice and exciting. So absolutely. what movie are we doing this week? This week, we are throwing it back to now and then from 1995. It is a coming of age tale about four 12 year old girls in the summer of 1970 and their adventures. This movie also shows the girls in present day mid nineties and the reunion of the group as one of them is about to have a baby. Oh, this, this movie <laughs> solid. Like this was on heavy rotation for sure. So heavy rotation, <laughs> heavy. Oh, and you can purchase it on iTunes and Amazon prime for nine 99 or rent on both for two 99. So oh. before we get started, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill, before we get into any movie, we'll reveal the rating of our Y2K versions of ourselves we give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our skill consists of, would buy it, would buy it again. The best, would play on repeat. Five day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. It's okay, nothing to write home about. And same day rental. Trash, in the sewer. With Samantha. (laughs) Oh, bless her. (laughs) So Danielle, what would you give this um, movie? Um, Your Y2K version of Danielle. She, she was a, she was a would buy it, would buy it again. I have it on DVD yet. I still bought it. I don't know how (laughs) to, I need to hook up my DVD player and stop playing these games. Um, But yeah, would buy it, would buy it again. How about you, Morgan? Is there one for like, just would never return it? (laughs) You know, like where your parents were going to have to pay like $45 for a $20 movie or or it was going to be on your credit and they were going to come for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like I still have a few that I'm pretty sure I'm being charged for somewhere along my lifeline, but um, I was obsessed with this movie. I, I had a few years where I didn't watch it as an adult, but once I like reopened that floodgate, it's I, I still I don't even know like I've got judgments I'll wait but <laughs> why Y2K Morgan was obsessed like obsessed I mean <laughs> if you know you know like the towel <laughs> yes <laughs> and what about you Jack um Y2K Jackie was not a fan of now and then so Ooh, I would say know, come on I would say uh, two day rental. I'm finding through this social experiment that there are some movies that are like popular, popular that I'm like, 
I was super judgy about. Yeah. You know, there, I feel like the universe knew there were certain things we shouldn't have discovered about ourselves when we were just (laughs) in the precipice of our friendship. So it didn't change anything, the dynamics, because I feel like Y2K Daniel would have been like, you know what, bitch? I don't trust you. I don't trust your judgment. I'd have been like, oh, we had a good run. We tried. <laughs> I would have come home and I said, I would have said to Christine, which is my mom, Jackie's not, Jackie's not, she's not making, she's not making the cut. And she'd have been like, why? She don't like, she don't like now and then. Christine, you know, your mama me. would agree. She'd have been like, <laughs> Yeah, that was a, that was a Christine and Danielle movie. She definitely took me to see that. And we had a a really good time watching that one together. Oh, I love that. That's so sweet. Okay. (sighs) Let's dive right in. We open up on a game of Red Rover. Red Rover is a savage, savage childhood game. Yes. Y'all, that was my first note. I put, I miss Red Rover. (laughs) that was legit my first <laughs> I missed that game so many games it was between this movie and when we did Crooklyn that I re- I remember like all the games we used to play outside with the you know big group or whatever yep kids now they're just missing out they really are <laughs> they just want another Nintendo Switch game where I'm like y'all don't even know yes don't even know how hard it was when you were down to like three people in Red Rover <laughs> and they they sent over the A team like you have no clue the fear the arms had to be strong yeah. and it, you oh, always like, you knew who your weak, you knew who your weakest link was too and you're like get in the middle and don't you or get on the ends or something I don't yeah. know <laughs> on the end because then you only I was have always to hold the weak one, one. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was you Morgan oh man <laughs> I wanted I'm not athletic I always wanted to be so bad but Red Rover made me feel included so <laughs> I can just imagine like they're always picking me. I'm so popular. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm like, y'all, I was Bobby Frank. <laughs> I was the Bobby Frank. Um that yeah. reality just hit. <laughs> it's a so hard it, moment. It's, it's the only the four left, and they they pick poor Bobby, the booger picker, because he looks unassuming <laughs> and weak. They know they could take him. Yep. <laughs> And oh man. They do block him and they celebrate like they won the World Series. I was just thinking oh to my myself, gosh, you pick, thank you. You pick the weakest person because the whole point is to try to like rebuild your chain. But the next person you pick to come, you know they're gonna go after him and you gotta lose him again. So what are we doing here? Yeah. <laughs> I think the celebration was the fact that they had Chrissy in the middle. <laughs> Like, I'm, I don't know if anyone's ever picked up on that. I'm like, you have Roberta, who's clearly athletic, and then Chrissy. I was like, well, that is a pretty solid win, really. <laughs> and then we kind of uh, transition after much celebrating to this beautiful J.C. Penny portrait of the four girls. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> Got to hit up the pennies for those wonderful photo ops. Yes. And then it kind of introduce the four main characters there is roberta who is played by christina rishi in 1970 and rosie o'donnell in um the present day and she is a doctor and a softball pitcher (laughs) and she lives in sin with her boyfriend Boyfriend. (laughs) so the interesting part about that um because (laughs) obviously Roberta definitely had tomboyish ways yes but also could have gone another down another path yeah and so when we were doing research we found out that the role was intended when it got to the elder Roberta that she was a lesbian and at the last minute they pulled it and that um that line what lives in sin with her her boyfriend was thrown in there at the last minute because they had changed their minds to make her straight. And I feel like they really should have just gone with it. But um, I, I don't know. They never said why that happened. And I'm wondering if it just was because Rosie O'Donnell wasn't ready at the time to come out. She came out five years after the movie. 
yeah, we could have had a totally different spin on it. And it could have been just very organic. I don't think anybody would have questioned it. But. No. Like if you just take out that line the and, and yeah, it'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a like it's a voiceover. It'd be really easy, especially like now, to just lift take it that out. Yeah. line out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so moving on to Teeny, she is played uh in 1970 by Thora Birch and present day by Melanie Griffith in her limousine eleganza. <laughs> okay, can we, I have to say this, one of my notes, guys, was I was like, why, like, who travels wearing white, and who travels wearing a mini skirt? Yes. Only Tina Terso. Yeah. Like, every was, time I see that, I'm like, this is ridiculous. She was given bad B vibes for sure. <laughs> like, was. I just heard the Trina song come on as, as soon as some legs popped out of the limo. <laughs> That's that's exactly she was giving oh those my vibes. Gosh. Uh, next we have Samantha played in 1970 by Gabby Hoffman and in present day by Demi Moore, who was also a producer on this movie, and her daughter is in it later. Yeah. Yes. It's funny because they had to work really hard to actually get Rosie O'Donnell to be to play the part. Like they stopped her pretty much. They went, she was on Broadway in the production of Grease. And they were like, look, we're going to take you to dinner. We're going to schmooze you. You got to play this. You got to take this part. It's for you. (laughs) And then last but not least, Chrissy played in 1970 by Ashley Aston Moore. Then in present day by Rita Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry. So Teeny is an actress. Samantha is a writer and Chrissy is pregnant. As she's a stay-at-home, about to be a stay-at-home mom, married yeah. to a dentist. And that is I'm- so, like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Like when you think like the white picket fence and all yeah. that, like, yeah. it's just the quintessential. She was living <laughs> so in a time war for sure. But yeah. it's really sad because the actress, Ashley Aston actually passed away. That made me sad she was when young I saw too, that. Yeah. yeah. She was 26, I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we see Demi Moore as Elder Samantha, and she is traveling back home to Indiana. They made a pact to get together when any of them needed each other, and she was regretting that pact (laughs) as she chain-smoked and drove to her hometown in Indiana. So she y'all, she didn't even crack a window. Did she no, didn't. She was she was just oh my gosh. <laughs> she was just sucking it in all that then, toxic fumes. Yes. But this, then when this, she pulls up, she has the window down and she's like, oh I'm like, well, yes, you're breathing better because you were <laughs> hot boxing. Like, yeah. So Samantha plays the narrator in, in this movie. And the interesting part is the writer of this movie, Marlene King, who you may know as the showrunner of Pretty Little Liars and many other shows. She actually wrote this about her life growing up in the suburbs and she wrote it at 10 years old. Oh, it's so baller, right? Like right. when I was 10, I couldn't even write a full essay. <laughs> and she's over here. She's like, I've got an idea for a film. <laughs> A feature film uh, yeah. about my life story at 10 years <laughs> at 10, old. At 10. <laughs> and she didn't peak either. No. Gee, yeah. Right? Come on. <laughs> you see like this panning sweep of Chrissy's room as she's getting ready. And it is all things girly. I love she it. Got, she got the Avon makeup and perfume on the mirrored tray in her little vanity so I wrote Chrissy is prissy <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my 100% <laughs> I was just thinking to myself like which girl I felt relatable like that was relatable to me at the time when I watched it and how I feel now and I think I really really loved Roberta when I was younger yes it was the boob thing but we'll get to that. (laughs) um, But now I like love Chrissy. I love that she just sticks to her delusions a hundred percent. I love her decor. (laughs) I love everything about her that she loves her friends, but she's not afraid to stick up for herself. That that's all I'm going to say. Okay. I legit wrote Chrissy's opening scene is a total vibe. (laughs) I mean, it is full on commitment between the florals and the the decor. (laughs) Between the aquanet, the shade of pink that she chooses to wear, her dress, the giant bow. I'm like, 
y'all she legit had like that giant collar <laughs> on her dress that had lace on the ends i was like she is and she is nine months it. pregnant in like a linen dress yeah and like <laughs> she's single curling each strand of her yeah. hair i was like nah <laughs> and she she did it all and pulled a husband she ain't working i said this is the life i'm going for let me just take notes <laughs> like Chrissy we, we didn't understand it when we were younger but now we do <laughs> she was a kept woman I love it <laughs> Chrissy does not like swear words like breast <laughs> I would have responded okay Chrissy titties it is <laughs> that's how Danielle rolls that that's Danielle's hard stop <laughs> Oh my it, man. Where Chrissy ends and Danielle begins. <laughs> <laughs> and then soon thereafter, Samantha walks in. I like her vibe. Dude, she, the shoes. Can we talk about it? She's like wearing spats. Yes. I was like, yes. The whole menswear thing. I'm yeah, here she, for it. Slackers, vest, blazer, and then like the Heidi hair. Loved it like her whole look i i adored it talk about how bad the makeup was in the 90s because if you look at any of these women now they look dewy and fresh but then they look the gorgeous yes but then they look like 30 years older than they should have been did they not look old in this movie yeah Am I bad? I'm like thinking like the lighting. I'm like, why wouldn't, like, I feel like the lighting and the color grading in the whole movie, I was like, ooh. Yeah. I think they were trying to make it seem like they were older, so it was a little bit darker. Pastel shadow and lips is just not really a good look on anyone. No. No. Teeny shows up and immediately says, hey, bitches. And Chrissy doesn't get onto her. (laughs) She didn't say (laughs) breasts. (laughs) <laughs> her mouth just dropped so Chrissy's out there going oh dear lord <laughs> and then we find out that Chrissy is in the same house like her childhood home she's never left Can failure you- to launch apparently no. uh-uh let's talk about generation wealth because that bitch didn't hey. pay for a house so I, I'm all about, again, I'm reading her, I'm reading her list of things to do. <laughs> you got your Chrissy checklist? I do. I'm calling my mom tomorrow and say, Let, let's talk about the future. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with the house? <laughs> plastic still covering the sofa. I wrote that plastic on the couch. My grandma plastic. used to have plastic on the couch. Yeah. All bad. All bad. <laughs> And so then we are now outside. I do love that there's like a, a cool, a, it'll be a callback later with the husband. He pushes his glasses back and he says, yes, dear. And, mm-hmm. you know, you don't really pay attention to it, but it comes full circle later. So, and you can see the tree house in the background. There's a comment about how her husband wanted to get rid of it uh, to put up a doughboy, which is a pool, an above ground pool for those who so why would know. you need to get rid of they have oh, maybe the tree they had so yeah. much land land yeah. yeah first of all can we talk about this tree house i was obsessed i opulence like- <laughs> <laughs> i just felt like my life would have been complete if i had had a tree house you know have- i was jealous of it back then i'm still jealous of it now yes. that yes. thing is just it's amazing it's gorgeous it is and the curtains and all the details Chrissy didn't do shit later on when she was like when they were painting and all the work they had to do to get the money but when it came down to decorating the house the bitch was ready <laughs> there's so much pink so much so pink. much and then did we did you guys notice Roberta's outfit yes when when penny loafers wool socks prairie skirt as and then the unbuttoned she had like the white t-shirt or something and then that like the denim oh yeah it was like they could have given her something better i feel like roberta would not have dressed like that no she had a skirt on yes Yes. i missed that i I feel like if they had just (laughs) dressed her (laughs) 
<laughs> it was not it was bad yeah it was not great they i feel like if they either. they if they had just dressed her the exact same like she had never had a glow up but like roberta dressed fairly cute as a child with the little tied button down tops yeah mm-hmm. and give her some jeans this I, in the 90s I, honestly i just want to say this is probably a, a situation of the fact that especially in Hollywood that they did not know how to dress plus size women and the designers themselves were not making exclusive I mean things have gotten away a lot better from from then so I think they didn't even try but what I don't understand is you could freaking get a seamstress you can get some stuff tailor-made just for this actress they didn't put her try. in some jeans that's all yeah. they had to do is just put her in some jeans <laughs> yeah and she would have been fine yeah so anyway moving on oh it had been 10 years since they had last seen each other and then chrissy says roberta lives an alternative lifestyle and lives in sin with her boyfriend yep i think they just wanted to say alternative lifestyle and that was it yeah I would just, I watched this movie and I'm like, who are you fooling? You've got Rosie O'Donnell, who's actually a lesbian in real life. <laughs> and Christina Ricci's part, she was giving, I'm a lesbian, I'll be coming out in a few a few years. Yeah. So who, who are we kidding around here? Even as a child, I already knew. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. Nobody was fooling. No. Studio execs, you're not fooling anyone. No, not at all. Um, and then she talks about Teeny's four failed marriages. And so not only is Chrissy prissy, she's also very critical. Of First of friends. all, it wasn't four marriages. She said it was three. She got one annulled. <laughs> prissy was just salty though, y'all. Like, yes. I mean, she's like calling Samantha out for wearing black and saying she wasn't happy because she wore black. I'm like, I'm gonna need you to sit down. Like, <laughs> yeah. She said, maybe if you men love color, you know what? Chrissy had a man. I don't, I just, just saying, she the only one who had a man. Oh, she was. No, I mean, no Roberta no. lived in sin with her boyfriend. Whatever, but like had it locked down. <laughs> but Chrissy had papers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> she had papers. Not that we- that's a definition <laughs> of like where we need to strive for, obviously. But I'm just saying, add some color to your palette maybe you might you know pick some up well she references it at the end I don't know if you guys remember where she's talking to Samantha and she's like maybe you should try integrating more color into your wardrobe men love pastels yes. on a woman. <laughs> oh it's painful but it's <laughs> kind of true <laughs> until we could take the patriarchy down there's still these horrible rules unfortunately and it's true for femininity men associate pink and pastel color yeah. not all black oh, they yeah. don't dig a woman in a tailored trouser and vest <laughs> <laughs> unless there's no bra and shirt <laughs> yeah, i would say no <laughs> Hard pass. that was nice <laughs> <laughs> okay so we transition to summer of 1970 in shelby indiana and uh, Samantha is still the narrator, and she said the most common cause of death before puberty was boredom. Drama. I know. Yes. So dramatic. <laughs> and they were, this was the summer of them seeking their freedom and independence. I just feel like the privilege in just that sentence. There are kids out here starving, and you talking about boredom. Get out of here. Oh, I wrote like, not too long after it's 1970s kids uh, or the 1970s versions of them, I was like, these are rich white kids that uh, have nothing better to do in this suburban town in Hell, 1970s. Yes. This movie and Harriet the Spy, I would like to say, are the foundations on which Karens were made. You know, we just <laughs> think that they just came out of nowhere, but they were t- they were bred. They yes. were bred and taught that other people's business was theirs to be had. I feel like in a lot of ways, this is like 
the polar opposite of Crooklyn. Yes. Crooklyn is like what Brooklyn in the summer was. And then this is Shelby, Indiana in the summer. And they are two vastly different worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I could never see Troy go looking into people's business about why some boy died. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Continuing on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and their summer goal was to raise money to buy a tree house. I do like that the parents didn't just give it to them. I do this like they have to work for it. I give them props for that. And we see Sam. She is reading under her covers, kind of foreshadowing that she's going to be an author later in life. And you can hear her parents fighting. Her dad saying, this isn't working. This hasn't been working for a long time. And then her little sister comes creeping into her room to snuggle <laughs> in bed with her. And it is little baby rumor Willis. So cute. So cute. Oh, she was so cute. <laughs> and then next we see Roberta getting ready for the day. And she keeps measuring her boobs because they keep growing for some reason. And here is where I said we'd talk about it later. This is when I really felt Roberta's woes because any girl who started to develop a little earlier than others wanted them bitches to go away. Did no, not I was teeny. Those. I was like, I want them. Bring them on. I wore a water bra in fifth grade. <laughs> I was like, I want them. I wanted mine. To time go was away. not kind. <laughs> it, 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 you got them. You're like, you want it? You got I'm it. Like, I'm like, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see her actually taping her boobs down to make her appear flatter. Um, we learn that she lives with her dad and older brothers and her mother has, has passed away and she never leaves the house without her mom's picture. And the picture is actually a real photo of, I believe, one of the producers. I wrote that down somewhere in here because I was like, I found that fascinating. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why I thought that I needed to write that down. But <laughs> can we also talk about the fact that it said she carries that picture with her everywhere. And she shoves it in her butt pocket of her jeans. Yes. And I'm like, I don't know how Indiana weather is, but just summer in general. Yeah. Just saying, there is no way that picture, the only picture she has of her mother is in that creative shape after <laughs> yes. all this time. <laughs> and riding around on your bike everywhere. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, it is the producer, Jennifer Todd. That's the picture. Nice. And then we see Teeny, whose room is... Orange 70 explosion is the best way to describe this bedroom. And she is pretending to accept her Academy Award because that's what teeny do. <laughs> hey, you know what? She manifested the hell out of her dreams and she, she, she knew exactly what she wanted and she went and got it. I got to give did. her props for that. And um, we find out teeny is an only child and her parents are country club members which means they just host a bunch of parties and are never home there were rich white swingers i believe yes. they were swingers that's <laughs> in my heart those were the vibes they were giving <laughs> and so then we see chrissy so much pink <laughs> she's sitting there brushing her hair a hundred times like um marcia brady yes and then in walks bonnie hunt God, I love Chrissy's that woman. Mother. I love her so much. And she is not in this movie for more than like maybe a minute I think total. That scene, right? That's it. Yeah. What she does in this scene, just the little things like fixing the canopy and yeah. how she explains the birds the and the bees to Chrissy. Yes. Is just so, so detailed good. and so good. That scene though with her and Chrissy, my eight-year-old was watching it with me and he goes, geez, what's that mom's deal? He's like, she's <laughs> making me nervous. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, ma'am, for like a kid that's just kind of a bystander watching that. I was like, how amazing is that though, that she could convey that so well that you're like, okay, I understand why Chrissy is the way she is for the yep. rest of the movie. Absolutely. Like, was Honestly, iconic. I'm surprised Chrissy didn't actually the older version of her wasn't like Demi Moore's character. 
mm-hmm. like completely disillusioned. Like she went out in the world and realized that her mom was full of crap and completely changed. I'm surprised that didn't happen. But she never went out in the real world. She just stayed yeah. in, yeah, in wherever Shelby, the heck they were. There Shelby, Indiana. <laughs> a little so then, kind of yeah <laughs> and I did write after Bonnie Hunt comes in steals the scene okay she's a little particular about things <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit and so then Chrissy asks about sex and Bonnie Hunt replies okay since your friends are trash mouths <laughs> which I really love that insult yeah um she said, all women have a garden and a garden needs a big hose to water it or a small hose as long as it works. It's so <laughs> cringy. <laughs> so then we meet the wormers. The girls are all just hanging out in the cul-de-sac and the wormers come by and they are there to quote, make our lives miserable. Hey, wormers. That's all I hear in my head. <laughs> And they proceed to pelt the girls with water balloons filled with green jello. Oof, I would have been mad if that got in my hair. And then Roberta takes off after them. And when she falls, Oof, that looked she real. eats it hard. Yeah. But the next scene after she gets up, I put, was Roberta a Lannister? Because she literally said, okay. we always pay our debt. Yes. I, so I wrote, was Roberta a Lannister? <laughs> <laughs> it pans over to the diner. And so the girls are in the diner taking a Cosmo quiz. <laughs> and- Cosmo, <laughs> ruining women's expectations since 1970 something. Yes. <laughs> Um, and Chrissy is counting their money because she's the accountant. <laughs> she needs this tree house to happen. Yep. And she got them tree house dollars. And she says, we have 23 more dollars to go. So that 23 more dollars in 1970 is equivalent <laughs> to $90 in 1995 Oof. or $161 in 2021. Oof. There it is. Okay. Ballers. <laughs> I and know, then, like they're pulling in some serious <laughs> yes. and then we see sam's mom who in sam's own words has been dressing like nancy sinatra lately not mad at mom no she looks uh, hot mom was amazing every like she had the best outfits in that entire movie yeah. best outfits best wigs mom was, was on point she was killing it she was bringing new york to indiana <laughs> she was <laughs> And Indiana was not really happy about it, but they <laughs> can suck it because she was bringing all the style. But Sam was embarrassed because yeah. her parents were going through stuff and she didn't feel safe enough to talk about it yet, which was kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah. They're talking yeah. about the full moon tonight is going to be the Festival of Spirits. Then Janine Garofalo delivers their food <laughs> and love her. <sighs> she's just she's great in whatever she does yeah and she 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 has really dyed black hair yeah just looks kind of did you put pudding and so the next scene is sam um at sam's house dad is now moving out she can hear him saying goodbye not very nicely to her mother and he slams the door packs his camaro pieces out and then shortly thereafter, Sam sneaks out to go to the cemetery. We get to the cemetery. Everyone's sitting around. Chrissy's cold. And so they, someone throws her a sweatshirt or something. And I wrote, who told Chrissy she was fat? And then I rewound it. And it was teeny. Yeah, there oh. were a few comments of fat shaming and so we just did which movie well it was we we just did um camp nowhere and heavyweights not too long ago and the 90s were just an awful time for children um who were not traditionally skinny and i think it just got even worse in the 2000s yes um but yeah they well and that speaks to so the role of um Chrissy was offered to Kirsten Dunst 
And she said no, because she didn't want to have to gain weight and mess up her figure. Do you know how young that girl was at that time to be talking about a, a godforsaken figure? And quite honestly, I don't, if they wanted the, it to go to, if they're diversifying the cast or they wanted it to go to a, a little bit of a heavier set girl, why not just cast a heavier set girl? Why would you yeah. get a skinny girl and, and make them make game her weight. game weight? That first of all, well, they make like boxy clothes on her too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there were quite a few jokes in there like it would have been one thing I I think I would have been a little bit more okay with it if it had come from external places like the warmers yes. warmers or some of the other kids I but from her own friends that wasn't nice that was what was so upsetting is like these are supposed to be your best friends and she yeah. straight up she didn't even say like oh maybe stop yeah. eating Twinkies or something like that she was right. just like straight up like because you're fat and I'm like what what so now when we go back to the, when we go to the future and Chrissy is throwing shade, do we blame her? Do we blame yeah. her? Cause I don't. Do you guys <laughs> think like, I kind of was watching it um, and thinking like, I don't know if all four of them would be friends if there wasn't like the connecting friend. Like yes. I don't see Teeny and Chrissy, like just like being like, Hey, yo, let's hang out. Or like, even like, um, honestly, like those two really just kind of just seem weird in the friendship dynamic to me and Sam just felt I don't know it just was one of those where I'm like how did this all like come together yeah. I feel like Roberta was the bridge because yeah. Roberta had Chrissy mm-hmm. but Roberta was also close to Sam and it felt like Sam and Teeny, Teeny were really good friends so yeah. I think Roberta was kind of like the glue and that happens so much in friendships like any of my girl friend groups there's always like a pair that is just closer than everyone else or there's somebody in the group that is just kind of there because another person brings them in um I think that's very real and I think that's very real for childhood friendships especially when especially when it's just like before high school when you're not really trying to find your identity it's just oh you live next door to me we're friends I've imprinted on you (laughs) I've imprinted (laughs) And then um, they start talking about Dear Johnny, which is a tombstone in the cemetery. He passed away in 1945. He was only like 10 or so. Um, and so then they decide there, since trying to, uh, to summon Marilyn Monroe hasn't worked, they're going to work and try Dear Johnny. Chrissy has a pretty amazing fake out. Thank you. I wrote that in all caps. I was like, this was the best. (laughs) Like, especially after they just threw shade at her for being fat. She's like, no. She called them out for their dumb shenanigans 100%. She did. (laughs) Um, And then there's stuff happens all at once. Lightning strike, immediate rain, Chrissy be gone. I wrote Chrissy <laughs> ran like she's running in the Olympics in the track and field <laughs> category. She was. They gave her a head start with the bicycle later yeah. on, but I'm like, she, she don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> she don't need it. On foot. She's yeah. fine. <laughs> she became Flojo real quick. <laughs> she did. <laughs> um and then they all go home. Sam starts seeing things like she's convinced that they've released dear Johnny's spirit Mm. and he has followed her home question mark. I could only imagine if I was in this group of friends and I told my grandma that we were out there in the cemetery releasing spirits. First of all, you wouldn't get, you were not getting a black child to play in a cemetery. Just not happening. Can we just talk about the fact that they were so obsessed with like they're 12 it references yes. that they are 12 and I wrote down I was like why were these girls so infatuated with the creepy seance stuff that's the door you don't want to play with <laughs> yeah I'm like don't they were now and then is the gateway drug for the craft that's it which we all know how that ended yeah. so. yes well I have Danielle and then my other really good friend is creole and so she's also like you don't play with things you don't understand my my grandmother would have beat me you were where do it what Mm -hmm. with who yeah no no way 
There's a nope, reason. I'm like one step below <laughs> Pentecostal. I'm like, we are spirit filled, demon busting, Holy Ghost speaking. I'm like, you do not. There's just certain things like you, you, you play with a hot pan. It's going to burn. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I went to a party once and um, it, I think it was like middle school and they brought out a Ouija board and I called my mom to come pick me up. I Come said, on. you oh. white bitches are crazy. Cause I you're over there, you're it. like, I'm gonna be able to sleep tonight. I'm yeah. not gonna be cursed for the next 20 mm-hmm. years. I'm gonna be good. And they were playing those games like saying Bloody Mary in the mirror. I was like, no, oh, it's no. not happening. <laughs> and Candyman, hell no. <laughs> Time to go. I'm going home. <laughs> so um they also see they call him crazy pete poor old man pete just riding his bike he's on a night ride it's not hurting anybody he's not he reminds like this character is uh, reminds me of the old man character from home alone yeah where he always just kind of shows up and like scares the crap out of kids but he's just actually a really nice sweet old man with emotional baggage but i feel like that I, I feel like it teaches kids, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Yes. But also some of those people in your neighborhood that you feel like you get a creepy vibe from as a kid, trust your gut, trust your instinct. <laughs> They're a pedophile. Mm-hmm. You, you know it. <laughs> Stay away from And school. why did they give him a creaky bike? Yes. As he's like <laughs> riding, it's just creaking the whole time. I'm like, I feel like if this dude was riding that bike that regularly, like it would be (laughs) well-oiled. I have expected him to be on one of those bikes with like the giant front wheel and the tiny like (laughs) back wheel. (laughs) Like give crazy Pete a reason to be crazy. Right. 100%. (laughs) Sam's windows are wide open. Like it is legit storming. Yeah. And her windows are wide open papers are blowing across her room and she's just in there and then all of a sudden the wind stops and she's like oh well this is fine and that's when she thinks dear johnny has like entered her room he's free (laughs) who knows (laughs) at least Um, like get a sign like how ghost rider used to at least tell you some stuff you know give you some clues (laughs) you know (laughs) like (laughs) wind came i know johnny's alive there was no real evidence to this madness well the, later on they see that the tombstone is cracked, cracked so yeah. they think that's why um and then sam decides that there needs to be an emergency meeting and they've got a communication system oh it is <laughs> epic <laughs> <laughs> so she yanks on a string that goes to roberta's house and has a bell roberta Here's the bell, <laughs> grabs her flashlight and starts shining it in Teeny's window. Which I would have never woken up. No. With that. That was never. the flaw in, in their communication chain. <laughs> so Teeny wakes up, also has a flashlight to signal to Roberta that she's got the she got the message loud and clear. <laughs> and then turns over and grabs the biggest walkie-talkie ever. It's just shy of a CB radio <laughs> <laughs> and calls Chrissy. And I love how Chrissy responds to this because I feel I would have been yes. the same way. Like, what the hell do you guys want? <laughs> She's got them curlers in her hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, can't this wait till tomorrow? I just saw y'all. Yeah. What do you want? Um, so then they go back to the cemetery and that's when they see the tombstone is cracked. And then there's a scary bird that flies by and freaks them all out. I don't, which was a hawk. They were, it was supposed to be an owl. The owl died that day on set RIP. Um, and so they had a hawk. No! (laughs) And so they had to get a hawk instead. So they they had a run on owls. They couldn't just get another. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> they said, get the back up, hawk. <laughs> and so then they decide they need to research 
dear Johnny, there's nothing in their hometown about him. And so they are going to go, the good library with all of the archives is in Greenfield. I know, I love how Chrissy's like, well, <laughs> they're sitting on, they're sitting on the corner with popsicles and they're like, sure oh, we have to- push pops. <laughs> yeah, the oh, push pops. so good. <laughs> And Chrissy's like, well, <laughs> case wrap. I guess we that. get that, you know. And they're like looking at. She's like, we can't ride our bicycles to a whole other town. And they're like, the yeah, we can. She looked so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is where, like, the soundtrack is great the whole way oh. through. But this is where it ramps up. Yes. This bike riding scene where the not three times on the ceiling ceiling if you want want me me. (laughs) twice on the pipes ding ding (laughs) if your answer is is no no. (laughs) oh my sweetness (laughs) did y'all know that that wasn't supposed to be the original song no yeah I saw it was that. originally supposed to be like diana ross or something like that but the girls couldn't get the lyrics so they switched it to that because they thought it would be easier it's which perfect. i love because it gave me a song like, i don't God. think that was a song that you know how like there was the 60s stations the oldie station back in our day back in, yeah, back day, in our day <laughs> the oldie station was 60s and 70s and I don't recall that song being in my rotation. So no. I'm glad that they did that because I love that song. It's awesome. Then I wrote, they spend a lot of money for people trying to save money because <laughs> they have the push pops. <laughs> they stop, they get lunch, they get soda. <laughs> They're at the diner eating. I'm like, Is it stay home, and make a PB and J if you want treehouse dollars. Right. I feel like, I feel like especially Chrissy's mom would have whipped them up a like a really good lunch or something. Yes. They had McDonald's money, (laughs) (laughs) y'all. They always played truth or dare, but they always chose truth, no matter whose turn it was. I feel like that's very real. Like I, all the girls that I, we would do dare sometimes, but we were all punks. We would always say truth. This is the conversation while they're all having their sodas because it's so hot and sweaty riding our bikes to Greenfield uh, that Teeny is very noticeably more endowed and they (laughs) ask her about it. And she said, I got the idea from the warmers. I filled water balloons with pudding because it's heavier and it has a more realistic texture. Yeah, I think because the conversation started because she, she was obsessed with Roberta's boobs and asked her what size they were. Of course, Roberta wasn't really having it. And then she's like, I'll just tell you about my situation, <laughs> which just, I would have never thought to put pudding in balloons. I that never took some work. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's dedication. They ask Chrissy, truth or dare, she chooses truth, Avi. And they ask her, has she ever heard? French kissed a boy which they know the damn answer why are you trolling me y'all know (laughs) I would tell you if I kiss somebody like get the hell out of here and she said no I don't want to get pregnant thanks for that Bonnie Hunt (laughs) (laughs) well she does explain that she understands kissing does not cause you to be pregnant but it does cause you to um it, it leads them, up. It's the starting point. But she say? It's, they can't help it. They're driven. It's the male <laughs> first. <laughs> that is a very interesting way to put it. That oh, wow. Did y'all know saying. that that country store? You know how they're sitting there at eating or drinking or whatever they're doing. Did you guys know the history with that little country store? No. no. This is how deep I went in, y'all. Like, <laughs> I opened one floodgate and I was like, holy, like, this is a holy grail. <laughs> so that building was actually part of the original, it was the original home of the president of the railroad from 1865 Ooh. and was purchased and moved across the street oh. and then was opened as like a general store, basically, that somebody decided to sell gas out of it and they called it Smitty's which is, I think, what it's called in the movie. I never caught that. And then it's been, like, purchased time and time again, and it's still in operation, like, to this day. That's awesome. That's awesome. But it's so cool because, like, the red barn and, like, the red truck and everything that come in the later scenes, 
I believe if I remember correctly, like they're all on the same property. Like oh. I'm like, and they make it seem like they ride in their bikes all over Kingdom Come. And I'm like, you went in a just, circle. Like, walked behind. <laughs> they were bamboozling I, us. I was like, I just thought that was so cool. Like that place literally is still standing from 1865 and it got its moment to shine. That's I, awesome. And Chrissy decides she needs a break. They just had snacks. But she needs another break. And so she like literally gets off her bike and refuses to move. And the girls can't abandon her. And Chrissy gets what's coming to her for not being a team player. And she was tired. I, I don't <laughs> like this rhetoric. I don't at all. She stuck up for herself. She didn't push herself to exhaustion. She needed a break. I'm sorry. I'm not at the same rate as you. I'm telling you, I'm tired. The bird pooping was good luck. Anyway. <laughs> And then you know how that grossed me out. Like, I can't. I know, Jackie's scene. not a fan of birds. I <laughs> I hate birds. I don't want them anywhere near me. I get pooped on fairly often, probably because I can sense my fear and disdain for them. <laughs> Disrespectful. But- they try to let you know. <laughs> yep. And so then um, they have they don't have anything to clean Chrissy's hair because it's like, bullseye on her, that pigtail Ugh. and so they go to the lake so that Chrissy can wash out her hair and they start splashing each other and start swimming in the lake so they're all just hanging out by the lake living their best lives Roberta climbs a tree and they all tell her it's not safe don't jump and so then Roberta proceeds to pretend that she is dead and is a floating body in the water and thinks it's funny and like their voice there's a voiceover that like it's a rationale that because her mom died she's trying to find the humor in death and this is not the first time that she's faked her own death type of thing yeah but that is traumatic yeah. for her friends it she what she did was wrong but obviously it speaks to that she had, really needs some help and her father is not really being a great resource to really talk to her about how she's feeling but Chrissy again holding her own well the funny thing is they pull her out of the water and um Teeny and um Sam are arguing about who to give mouth mouth to mouth or how to even do it and Chrissy pushes them all out of the way and is like I got this and then Roberta like spits up water and says you know I see who my face by the way yeah and says oh I, yeah, I would have mm-hmm. definitely did what Chrissy did. I, I probably would have done a slap with, um, rather than a punch. Hey, Danielle, I wrote Chrissy was right with that punch. So see, <laughs> sometimes I side with Chrissy. <laughs> yeah, she punches her. But apparently the punch in the movie, Christina Ricci didn't move her face the right way and or her head. And she ended up getting punched in the face full force and they had to shut down production for a few days because she was really bruised. Yikes. Yeah. I'm like, that makes that scene a whole lot more impactful. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I also uh, was just fact checking. CPR was um, invented or whatever in Mm -hmm. 1960. So it was possible for them Mm -hmm. to know what CPR was in 1970. (laughs) You know, I got to check. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> the more you know. So then we see the Wormers. So there are four Wormer brothers. Yeah, I didn't. I never realized until this watching that they were brothers. I think there's like six or seven of them, actually, because there's the little ones. Yeah. It might be five. Did you just think there were a posse? I didn't, I, yeah, I just thought they were friends. I don't know. It, it didn't seem that out of, out of pocket. Like the Sandlot, there was like a bunch of them as friends, you know? The He-Man Woman Haters Club. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this was when I felt like there was just a little too much gratuitous kid butt. Okay. So fast. I'm glad, I'm glad you're bringing this up because there are, are few so now as an adult knowing what we know especially about hollywood and all these child actors and the allegations and stuff that are coming out the kid from little rascals being one Mm -hmm. um 
there was no need to have the scene. No. None whatsoever. No need whatsoever at all. Or you could have had it and not had the nudity. Like they could have all been waist deep in water. Right. There could have been exposition that explained like, oh, I saw this thing or whatever. Right. And then the the second part of the scene where they've all grabbed stuff from the barn. Okay, yeah. whatever. Like you didn't need to show any butts. butts. Yeah. Let alone that much buttage. And throughout that scene, there is a rumor on the internet that if you like pause it at the right, you could right second, you could see said appendages. Um, but Wormer, Wormer's wiener, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Devin Sawa said that was not oh. accurate. Um, what did did you see this, Morgan? That they had to put like a sock or something? I shared, I did a TikTok on little known facts you might not know about now and then and it was like like that one was one of those that blew up I think it was at it's at like 1.3 million and what's crazy is the amount of people they're like trying to contest that no they paused it and they saw it and I'm like yeah that's a Mandela effect because there's no possible way (laughs) I'm like legally in filmmaking there's no way they could show that and produce it and get the rating that they did and then they came out and actually said that they had to wear like a sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. Sock thing. And I'm like, that's still pretty grotesque. Yeah. Even for that, like just. As a parent, no. I would be fine with my child being an actor, but there's, there's like, there are you scenes. You have to protect them. Right. There are scenes with nudity that may progress a story, but that was not progressing a story in any it way. Not. It's child pornography. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. It is. Period. And there's things in this movie that I saw that I was just like, it's the little things that they inserted into these movies that crept into our brains to make things feel like, they, to normalize things that were, yeah. and affects real children in real life in real situations to feel safe, a false safeness. Yeah, not not cool. I know people are like, oh, it's just a movie. And it's like, no, movies are not just movies. Movies just like educate yeah. us and filtrate how we see the world in so many ways. So yes. that bothered me a lot. I did like Chrissy's line that said, she said, I saw his penis and the balls. <laughs> <laughs> I love how she protested. Well, okay, fine. I'll do it because I know I'll never hear the end of it and you'll be talking about it. But you know, she was curious. You know she <laughs> yes. wanted to see what was going down in town town. <laughs> town town. Oh my God. <laughs> That's awesome. They steal the warmer's clothes to get back at them for the jello water balloons. And so the warmers have to grab various sundry items from the barn. Sundry. <laughs> <laughs> like one had like the hood to a tractor. <laughs> um, one had a bushel of hay or a something. Fruit yeah. basket. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just think it's weird that Roberta told Chrissy to go first to get a head start. But then later when the boys come running, Chrissy is still running with them. So I was like, what, what head start? She should have been on the bike going like what's happening. Yeah. Then they, yeah. They were all giving her the clothes. Right. I'm like, y'all, this makes no sense. <laughs> no <laughs> sense. None. They arrive at their final destination, the library in Greenfield. Chrissy pulls a book off of the shelf and open mouth sneezes onto it, <laughs> which in the time of COVID not cool it was never cool but even now even more so not cool Chrissy we notice more things now (laughs) (laughs) somehow Roberta I don't I can't tell if it was intentionally or she just grabbed a book off the shelf and it happened to have the article of her mom's death I feel like she did it on purpose I I don't know Like she has so much curiosity about the death of her mom and just, I feel like, yeah, a hundred percent. She, she pulled that. And so this Mm -hmm. is when she finds out that her dad had kind of sugarcoated for her benefit. um, Her mom's death. She knew she was involved in a car accident, but in the article, it said she was pinned and she was conscious the whole time. And she, then she later succumbed to her injuries at the hospital. So Roberta, makes a copy of the article and is kind of 
freaking out about that. Understandably so. And we, we don't really see that come to fruition completely. Like we see her have a breakdown later on, but you don't see her like confronting her dad about it. You don't hear Mm -hmm. her say she confronted her dad about it or they had a conversation and she had nothing. So it just felt kind of something that just was hanging out there. Yes. Uh, They find out that dear Johnny was Jonathan Sims. And they find a little article saying that him and his mother were murdered, but there wasn't much more information other than that. And there were pages that had been torn out of that volume of. And that, that just speaks to how much, and this is why we repeat history. This is why we don't know anything because in those, in a lot of those time periods, you know, you could only get that information by books, by newspapers and you know, they don't write the story in the right way. If you look up like even what they call the race riots in, in Raleigh, mm-hmm. they just said that the black people left town. There was a little bit of a scuffle and not, oh, we like murdered all these people and yeah. pushed them out. Like, so it's just so weird how they, even something like that, Yeah, you know, them not wanting to know what happened in that town. It's crazy. Like it was a, blemish on the town's reputation or something yeah they're disillusioned because they've kind of hit a a dead end in their detective skills trying to find out what happened to dear johnny so that they can release his spirit um (laughs) dude y'all the moment they get done with roberta copying her mother's picture like two pages later they find dear johnny yeah (laughs) every time i watch it even as a kid i was like okay (laughs) that's not gonna yeah and then they read it and I remember when I was a kid thinking that felt like such a massive mystery yeah and then you're reading it and you're just like this is okay like as an adult you're like I think this is kind of blown out of proportion a bit yeah just slightly but But a 12 year old mind I guess so yeah no like I think as kids we the things we thought were oh that seems cool that's heavy, man. <laughs> That's heavy. <laughs> and so they're on their way back home and they roll up on this Vietnam vet. He's obviously hitchhiking, kind of a wanderer, if you will. And it is a very fresh faced Brendan Fraser man, in I- an uncredited cameo. I love him so much. It was uncredited? Yeah. yeah. He- <gasps> <laughs> Stop. That was when I fell in love with that man. Yeah, I could watch the mummy all day. Oh, I don't know. That's 100%. when I realized that was him. I I don't know. I don't re- I, I don't remember him particularly in this movie. Like I know he's in it now. He's walking like they recognize that he is a vet. And so they start bombarding him with questions. And at one point I just wrote. Stop harassing him. He probably has PTSD. He's lost all of his friends in war. Obviously, he doesn't even have a home to go back to because he's wandering the streets of Indiana. Like, <laughs> leave the poor man alone. But he rolls with it. Yeah, he was very he seemed kind. like a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. But Jackie, you have said many times that these are privileged sheltered white girls i agree and they're listening they're literally repeating everything they've seen on the news not the tiktok not the tiktok (laughs) but the real news and they don't understand because there was propaganda telling them that yes this war winning we're winning and he's like nobody's winning so like i i guess and he is, he is the spectacle for them, right? He yeah. is something that they are so not used to is something so foreign. They hear about this concept of the Vietnam war on the news and that's as close as they get to it. Whereas this is some guy that has gone through it, has seen it, has seen his friends die in battle and they just can't get enough information out of him. Yeah. Um, but then he does a really weird thing where he offers them <laughs> cigarettes. Yeah, I would have, like, what I don't understand. This, first, I know this shouldn't have been my first thought, but I was like, why did he give them all single cigarettes? I would have had one and had them pass it around. Like, I'm not wasting my cigarette money. <laughs> I don't know why that's what I thought first. And then I was like, oh, yeah, kids should not be having cigarettes. 
she's in like general. secondary <laughs> <laughs> you, you ain't gonna bum my cigarettes you damn kids on top of being frugal <laughs> maybe kids shouldn't be smoking he says essentially you can't believe what they're telling you you can only believe in yourself if you're lucky are his like parting words so obviously we got a fresh face brendan Fraser, but morgan jackie listening picture, picture this Ooh, paint, we're getting a story time. Let me paint a picture for you. Ready. Imagine this dusty up v- Vietnam War vet being Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't see it, but I'm not a huge fan of his. Well, I saw that and I had a hard time including that in the fun facts <laughs> about now and then. And then I kept reading and it mentions Matt Damon. I'm like, not helping. No. Nope. Not helping. Yeah, they... No. They know DiCaprio was set to be in that role, but dropped out at the last minute. And it was a huge deal to get someone on the plane so quickly. And um, one of the agents had tried to pitch this fresh new guy named Matt Damon. (laughs) Fresh new. (laughs) Ages this movie a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. And they didn't even get a chance to even look at Matt Damon. They saw Frazier and liked him. So the lord put everything in place i'm just saying <laughs> the role just seemed like it was just made for him though, it was. he played it so well and he played it where it was i mean it was kind of creepy as an adult to watch it yeah but i remember watching it as a kid and it didn't feel threatening yeah if that makes sense like yeah. it's just i mean aside from the cigarettes give, being given to 12 year olds <laughs> but it like he wasn't trying to like be creepy with any of the girls. He wasn't trying to be rude, even whenever I think it was Chrissy that was popping back at him a couple of times, yeah. just took a step too far. I'm like, girl, he's been fighting for you guys. Yeah. Why are you talking yeah. to him like that? Don't. I just like don't. I get all my America over here from my small town <laughs> roots. But <laughs> no, that just I can't even that one I'm very passionate about, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, could you imagine freaking Jack from Titanic? Sitting on a red pickup truck with a little peace sign? No, no he I looks, could not. The problem with Leonardo DiCaprio is for the longest time, he just looks so young, no matter yeah. what role he was playing. And I would have looked at that and been like, damn, they recruit him real young nowadays. Like <laughs> I, I wouldn't have been able to see it. And Matt Damon, oh. trash. <laughs> I'm giving him a same day rental. <laughs> Chrissy, I think is the one that's like, well, I saw in the news and keeps like popping back or like my mom said, and he said, your parents aren't always right. And kind of just like, Hey, just putting it out there. FYI. Like, he said it so nicely. I thought yeah. he was going to say your parents don't know shit. Like I thought <laughs> for sure that's where he would have went. But and then was- as they kind of decide that it's time to go home as they're leaving sam turns around and says whatever it is you're looking for i hope you find it which i thought was a really nice detail and end to that scene Uh, just her acknowledging that like he's been through some shit and Mm -hmm. um just being grateful that he's there yeah no it was insightful for her at that age to to really be able to gauge that but you could tell by her experience with her parents and stuff, she probably was seeing things more than others. Mm -hmm. And so the next scene is Sam at home eating dinner with her sister and her mom. Um, And dad's (laughs) chair is empty. And there is a lovely jello casserole for dessert. And (laughs) then the doorbell rings. (laughs) This felt so real to yes. on so many levels because how many times when you're going through something and maybe you don't necessarily want to talk to your mother about it as an adult because even though you're an adult you still feel like oh, she's going to try to this is already hard I don't need I don't need this right now and uh Sam's grandmother is played by the legend Cloris Leachman national treasure right there yeah. oh, I love that woman Everyone She's talks amazing. about Betty White, but doesn't give her the appreciation that she deserves. Like they're 
both fantastic. They Can are. I just say this though? Like Samantha's mom, I feel like she handled navigating that whole divorce in a divorceless culture at that point mm-hmm. so well. Cause it, when the girls ask her talk about that or anything like that, you don't hear her bad mouth and dad, you don't no, hear her say yeah. anything bad. You hear Samantha reference it, but mom yeah. never did it. I was like, you know what? Kudos to mom because yeah, from just overviewing those earlier scenes I'm like kind of seems like it was just not a good treatment coming from that direction and she could have said a lot yeah she could have she was having a hot girl summer in her Nancy Sinatra boots (laughs) she didn't need to say anything she just needed to walk slowly (laughs) I just um my only issue was I feel like she probably could have talked a little bit more openly with with Samantha maybe than the younger daughter yeah um instead of I know she was just trying to make it through but the whole situation when she starts dating just felt very difficult yeah yeah Mm -hmm. and the way she handled it like I feel like she could have had her date like it was so early to introduce this man it was it was it was their first date too yeah they're talking about that I'm like okay bro like you're letting her cook for you on the first date I'm old school I'm a little traditional like you best be taking her out treating her it very like, much no. felt like hey kids here's your new daddy yeah <laughs> oh Which, and then the bowling shirt uh, oh oh I was and then too. he's gonna take him to dc and i'm like we're planning family trips like what is <laughs> happening here oh, it's first, so uncomfortable <laughs> it is so like it's so weird the first scene that really just pushed me over the edge with that situation was that when sam came home her sister was sitting on that man's lap. And yeah. I was just like, there's no way. <gasps> I've never caught that. Yeah, he was holding her a, like, there are predators out here. Get to know someone first before you have your child sitting on his lap. I don't know if you Ugh. guys ever had that conversation, but my mom at a certain age said, no more. Like, yeah. you cannot sit even on uncle so-and-so's lap. You're, that, that's it. And I at the time, I didn't understand like oh but but that's my uncle but now no yeah we skipped a couple of scenes let's rewind so they decide that they're not getting anywhere with dear johnny so let's go have um our tarot cards read that's the answer and And chrissy was not having that (laughs) 10 treehouse dollars (laughs) so upset um, 10 tree house dollars in 1970 is the equivalent to $39 in 1995 and $70 in 2021. So I feel like Chrissy had a right to be upset about 10 yeah. tree house dollars. I'm telling you, Chrissy is on point. My girl is bringing up the reads. And they really didn't get any information out of it. She read the cards, freaked out, and then told them to, to leave. Yeah, that yeah. always confused me. I was like, what did we get out of this? Nothing. She just, they just learned he was murdered. Minus 10 treehouse dollars. They knew he was murdered because yeah. of the article. Yeah, she got a nice, good, cool $10 off of these kids. She yeah. did open the door and say, I'm sorry, I'm not helping you. I'm feeling blue today. <laughs> They were like, maybe these cool $10 will help change your mood. <laughs> <laughs> so the local witch, not so helpful in this situation here. Yeah. She might have known something, but she just didn't divulge. Yeah. They didn't give her enough treehouse dollars. <laughs> she didn't give a good Whoopi Goldberg. You're in danger, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Otome Brown. <laughs> the next scene is... There's a pickup baseball game with all the kids in the community. They're all playing, but it's all dudes. Of course. Uh, They let, there doesn't seem to be a protest of Roberta being able to play, but once she's at bat, she's got a heckler in the background. Well, before she even gets the heckler, um, her, uh, Devin Sala's character is like, move it in guys, move it in. (sighs) same like princess diary vibes again yeah where oh this girl girls can't hit we need to move in closer so we don't have to run as far for the ball Mm. so the heckler says um girls can't play softball 
And so she kind of brushes that off. She's going to ignore him. And then he says, too bad your mother's dead. You need someone to teach you how to act like a girl. And Roberta snaps and oh, she just a hundred percent. Well, no, he says something else to antagonize her because the, the mother thing that he says, the mother jab is what sets Samantha off to tag in. So he says something else to her. He's heckling her. She knocks him straight off the, the, the fence. And then he gets back up and says something else. And then she jumps on him. They start fighting. <laughs> then her girlfriends are like, Roberta. And what I love the most is when he heckles her. Chrissy says, Roberta, remember you're a lady. <laughs> Hell no. Mm. And um, it, it was... They pull her F off. Politeness. <laughs> That's what that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. They pull Roberta off of him finally. And he says that horrible thing about his mom. Yeah. And Sam says, oh, I got some for you too. <laughs> she opens her cannibal bass and jumps <laughs> on him. And I love how she run when she gets home and she gets off her bike. She just has this pure satisfaction on her face. Her <laughs> hair is all tore up. She's got scut marks all over her face, but she, she's like, we did it. Yeah. We did it. And meanwhile, Scott Wormer is standing on the mound like, oh, Roberta. Is that, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> she got some fight in her kind of digging that. And then we have the scene with the creepy new boyfriends. Yeah. So, so Samantha is a must. Yeah. And she walks into this weird scene where new daddy is there played by Hank Azaria, the lovely, fabulous Hank Azaria. After the scene with new daddy, it is Sam just needs to get out. She needs to. Is that ahead. what happened? Because what I saw was a rude ass child who needed her ass whooped. Who the hell you think you are slamming my door? And where the hell you think you're going? To it's dark outside, bitch. You better get in this house. She's just and you came in teenies. beat up and then you're running out is my yeah. thought there's no way no, i would not be alive me. there would be no breath they would need to do the cpr on me <laughs> teeny is away from the key party that is happening below <laughs> and she is watching love story uh, apparently you can see the drive-in theater over like over the tree line if you sit on her roof so yeah. she's watching it without sound because yeah, she's she not knows. at the drive-in because she knows all the words and she yes. has, i think she has jiffy pop as well i noticed yes. the popcorn <laughs> and then sam joins her up there yeah um, and Safe. they have this moment at the same time <laughs> roberta's outside playing basketball and scott wormer shows up he's like you need to follow through and she's like get out of here i don't care what you think and so then they start playing a pickup game of basketball, a little one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and he said, you're pretty good and not just for a girl. Jesus. How nice. Set in the mood, oh. Scott. <laughs> that bar uh, real low. <laughs> yeah. And then he kind of is like, is it okay because you, and she's like, <laughs> she literally says, what are you mumbling? <laughs> You see him do the arm slide, kind of trying to put his arm around her. And you could, she knows that he's trying to hit on her because she looks very uncomfortable. Like she doesn't want to mess up. Like yeah. this is out of her comfort zone. And so then he's like, clearly, he says, Can I kiss you? She, <laughs> the way she reacts is such boss status. Like, I guess, sure. And so then another awkward teen kiss but oh, it's what, cringy <laughs> but what everyone has to understand for you younger millennials for us older millennials we had gone through a special journey and it was called casper okay so the journey set in the stage we go and see casper we watch this lovely love story well it's a story of friendship with a uh, oh boy my dead friend casper is fine and <laughs> I get to dance and float along with him and make out with him. And then Can he's I dead again. You? Yes, keep all of it. <laughs> Casper, you can have it. So we have this wonderful moment. Every 
preteen teen girl hooked and then we find out now and then has both Christina Ricci and Devin Sawa back at it and so as we see this sexual tension building up and we get this scene it's all coming back to us and we're super excited and we get another kiss we do so um Christina for consent I he did. Was so sweet yes he did uh, Christina Rishi was the one who got him the role of Scott Warmer because oh. she had worked with him on Casper. Funny thing. So Devin Sawa talks about how, um, you know, he was the only boy in the age range, 14, 15 years old at that time for, in the movie. So all the girls were after him. And so the girls kind of made a bet about who was going to get him. And apparently Christina, she, she took charge and she, she got there first. She Neil Armstrong, that shit. <laughs> so, Cleaned it in the name of Ricci. <laughs> yeah. Cause they were, uh, some of the research I saw, they were, the girls argued about all sorts of stuff. They were like sisters and he was definitely one of those topics where they were trying to get him. So noise very nice but he said he had a crush on all the girls very um politically correct thank you of, co- of course he did <laughs> <laughs> so we see sam and teeny they went to go sit in the tree house so right. they actually broke and entered into the lumber yard they hop the fence oh, that makes oh, into, yeah. because when they're coming out, you can actually see other tree houses kind oh. of set up around. Cause I remember the tree houses more than I remembered the heartfelt scene as a child. <laughs> so then whenever I watched it as an adult, I was like, dang, it's not how I remembered that going. And this is where they made another fat joke about Chrissy, about Chrissy. Cause they asked, um, teeny asked Sam if they were on a deserted island and they had she had to kill yes. one of them because they do truth and dare again she said who would you pick and she's like first of all I call you know like shenanigans on that because there's no way that would be plausible that's not happening she's like you stop to answer and she's like Chrissy and so um, she can feed the most people yeah Tini's like why and Sam says that and I was just like I can't and they laugh and I'm just like I'm not okay with this slander of Chrissy horrible nope. friends and they talk about because like, Sam confesses to Teeny that her parents are getting divorced oh, and right. Teeny gives like it's a really sweet scene where they're talking about Teeny's like there are no perfect families and they're kind of naming um tv show families yeah and they're like widower all everybody's of these scenarios. a widower yeah yeah or like brady bench second marriage for both blended family and so teeny is like there are no perfect families and you're it's going to be okay you're going to be okay type thing yeah and she gives her she takes her necklace and that she loves and she breaks it in half and makes a friendship bracelet and of course sam being the ruiner she is she loses her new bracelet right away. It's in a drain. It goes down. And, and so Sam sees her bracelet in the drain and she decides to stick her hand in the drain. I'm very scared of, of storm drains. I'm scared of them in general and also stuff falling into it. And I'm not able to get my stuff. It's a real. Why did Sam wear a crocheted poncho in everywhere. the dead of summer? Everywhere. everywhere. So Sam's in the in the nasty storm drain teeny is no freaking help okay so when she puts her hand to grab sam that that whole thing like she should have put i i I don't know i would have taken i would have taken that damn poncho and use it as a rope to pull up like these kids were not thinking at at all and then she goes to the 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 manhole yes that's I'm sorry, Crazy Pete cannot lift that like lift that. that. Yeah, no. you need some help. So she's trying to lift this, wasting all this time, and then she's hitting it. What are we doing here? So luckily, you know, Creepy Pete, um, I know that's not his name, but that's what I'm going with. Um, Creepy Pete comes and he pulls it and he jumps in. I mean, he don't even think twice. He dives into that nasty red water and he pulls up Sam. And these ungrateful little bitches, as soon as they recognize who it is, mm. they're like, oh, and he's like, 
and it broke my heart oh do you cry as an adult watching that scene I <sighs> I was so... literally like in so many I was like he's such a good guy yeah what's wrong with these children jerks and so they so he says well what why are y'all so scared of me i was like oh (laughs) i know (laughs) you're like you like to be alone and he's like the world has been hard and blah 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 so dude he says something that he said it i remember this word for word since i was a little kid because it just it just stuck with me he goes i don't like to see a lot of people and i don't think a lot of people like to see a lot of me oh yeah and i was like how many people do you like how many people feel that way that we're doing life with so that's why i was like that like as a kid that point i mean i was still a jerk as a kid i had to (laughs) i had to have some coming to jesus i was the white privileged girls riding their bikes (laughs) But it was one of those, like, of being it, the crazy Pete's character. Like, I know it's a coming of age with the girls, but his character, when I was like, really, my Y2K version found more inspiration from him and in how I view other people's lives instead of putting a bow on it right away, knowing yeah. everybody has yeah. some kind of a struggle. So then they, they go home. Yeah, they didn't even thank him and they just peace out. And the next scene is the girls painting the grudge door for Roberta's dad and Chrissy chilling eating a Twinkie. She needed a damn break. Leave her alone. She tired. She has to eat every couple of hours or else she gets nauseous. She's got hyperglycemia. What's with the judgment? (laughs) (laughs) This movie birthed my love of Twinkies. I'm not (laughs) even kidding. Especially how Chrissy ate them. She didn't just eat them. Like she took a bite and then she like pulled the cream out. I was like, I would have literally eat my Twinkies the same way Chrissy did while was, watching this. So they're painting in the garage. Scott comes over. He's like, hey, Berta. Yeah, I'm- like the rest of the warmers are assholes. And, but then he comes out and like sheepishly last and he's like, suck girl, you know? And the rest of them, they don't ask any questions. They don't talk about it. Roberta says, maybe they're not so bad. They all looking at her like she cray cray. And it was a cute scene. And Sam, the narrator, says that was the day Roberta stopped taping her boobs. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Get it. Get it. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> the next scene is they go to Sam's grandma's house because they're going to pump her for information about I Johnny. I love this scene. But yeah, she didn't expect her to. She's like, oh, so you brought the whole neighborhood. And. <laughs> gives them really bad lemonade yeah i'm like did she just pour straight like lemon juice in there or something is it grapefruit juice i thought maybe she put alcohol in it it was super weird yeah (laughs) and so then like she barely passes out the glasses sam asks her about johnny deer and grandma's like oh no we don't talk about that yeah we don't talk about that it's like you don't want to know about that it's too gruesome and the kids are like yeah we do want to know and she's like "Uh uh-oh gotta go to whatever my bingo my bingo bingo ladies are here which all all i thought about was your mom so jackie's mom used to go hoard on some bingo and we would go with her sometimes, which we were really excited when we got old enough to be able to go. And they, she would give us all the different color stampers. I mean, best times of our lives. But she was like, oh, you got to set them out like this. And then you put the <laughs> machines like this. And then you have to do this. And you can't call it. And you have to knock if you have one more. And then if your doggy is jumping on the machine, that means you have one more on the machine. And do you need me to take over your cards? Like mom is <laughs> hard. Yeah, grandma kind of gets squirrely and then her ladies arrive. And she's got to go. She got to go. She put on that wig. (laughs) She put on that wig and that wig was falling. (laughs) And when I tell you that those grandmas screeched those tires and burned the hell out and the girls decided that they should sneak back into the house, into the attic, because they know that Sam's grandma like collects everything in her scrapbooks. And so they go and they, and they do find an article, Sam's grandfather writing a letter to the editor about what happened. And so they find out it was kind of like a home invasion and the, they were killed Johnny and his mom because they woke up while they were being robbed. So that was 
kind and, of a and sad scene. That's when Sam realizes uh, Crazy Pete is the father to dear Johnny and yeah. the mother. Um, <clears throat> and Roberta and so, has an outburst at this point. Yes. So she, she just gets so frustrated about how people die unnecessarily and it's not their time and it's not fair. And so she kind of has her meltdown and that's when they make the pact that when any of them need each other, they'll They'll all be be there for one another. I totally understood this breakdown, but I was also like, we snuck back into this house and we are supposed to not, it's not supposed to be like we were here and Roberta breaks stuff in there. Yep. She breaks her grandma, um, Sam's grandma's mirror. And I'm just like, what is, what was, why? And, and my thought is, how does an antique? Yeah. Like that is irreplaceable, <laughs> yeah. Roberta. And she's going to have seven years bad luck or 13. <laughs> I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> uh, she's already in the cemetery. She's kind of yeah. screwed it away. <laughs> so now they're back in the cemetery and they notice that there's a um, tractor bringing in a new tombstone, uh, a new tombstone for dear Johnny since his other one was <laughs> yes. split. And they thought that they were having, again, another seance. And so they don't really realize that it's a tractor right away. And the guy comes out and he's like, what the hell are you guys? This is like so disrespectful. Why are you in this cemetery? what Morgan why was there fog okay I was watching it and I'm like this looks like when you walk into like a spirit store (laughs) like I'm like okay for one a tractor would not backlight anything to that extent no and then two that is straight up like hardcore fog in Indiana in the summer and why was he doing it at night it's so random well, my I think dude, like low-key creepy in its own right yeah I think a lot of times grave diggers work at night because they don't want to disturb people who are mourning during oh, the, the day yeah um, but would you ever use a tractor to- in a cemetery like I feel like you would risk breaking a lot of stuff well that's why he broke it he said he said it's real hard moving around in this without hitting something yeah fool because you shouldn't be driving a tractor in the cemetery <laughs> yeah and so they 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 were convinced that they let when johnny's spirit was let free from their seance that's what broke the tombstone and he's like nah i hit that shit with the tractor yeah and y'all need <laughs> and to get the hell out of here and go home immediately disillusioned and then chrissy was like y'all just need to get over it and i'm like she is so rude at times <laughs> she's re- she's not rude she is she she's can't a be skeptic. She, she's a realist. <laughs> yes. Like, let's yeah. let's move on, people. I've wasted enough of my hot girl summer on this. <laughs> she's like, we could have already been chilling in our treehouse had we right. not been all wrapped up in this. <clears throat> so then the voiceover comes on and says that was when they knew their days of playing make believe were over. And then Pete's standing there and they all just walk out like they're like, there's crazy Pete's. I think Teeny says, I don't, don't know call if they him crazy. See, I, do they see him? They see him? Mm-hmm. Okay. They see him because I wrote, he couldn't even get a wave. Yeah. And then Sam picks flowers right outside the cemetery and walks back in. And she's like, I know that you're dear Johnny's dad. And he just, he tells, I just wish that yes. I- been, if I were was home, it, you know, like as if he could have prevented it, but he was at that yeah. damn bar. And then what she said was, well, you saved me. Like there was an off chance that you would have been killed too. And then yeah. I wouldn't be here. You yeah. know, like, so there was a really sweet exchange where Sam just acknowledged him. Yeah. And then there's another voiceover or maybe it's not a voiceover. You said you can't shut out the world. There's a purpose for the good and the bad. Yeah. And then somehow that garage painting for 10 treehouse dollars put them over the threshold. And so they're able to get their treehouse for their hot treehouse summer. <laughs> and Chrissy immediately to the pink lace for the curtains. She is ready to de- decorate and um, it is in the details. 
but at this point, Sam, as a narrator, is just saying that they had this summer that was supposed to bring them together, but what it did was bring them their own separate independence from each other. And you yes. kind of see them all positioned in different places around the treehouse, kind of doing their own thing. See Teeny putting on her makeup, trying to look real hot in her romper. You see Roberta <laughs> working, uh, doing woodwork. I don't know. Uh, Chrissy's <laughs> decorating. And then um you have sam on the top of the treehouse writing in her soon to be novel then it goes back to the present chrissy is now in labor i literally wrote where's chrissy's husband like if your wife is nine months pregnant why are you gonna work he's gotta that paid him bills formula ain't cheap formula ain't cheap he has and, to pay those bills and he maybe she was a little bit early I, I don't know but Roberta he knows Roberta got it she's her damn doctor I mean he always okay, sister sorry. wives at this yeah. point like <laughs> exactly and then this, yeah, this Dan- is one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie <laughs> this Danielle is where I get indignant I said uh, damn this movie on people of color in present day 1990 the limo driver and had 30 an hour and 30 minutes into the movie before we saw, saw a person of color and when we see him he is right. a service worker yes and he is being yelled at a white lady to give her his vehicle which he is responsible for for work he was carjacked he was ridiculous <sighs> Um, and then they go to the hospital, which looks like a room. And then all of them are helping Chrissy along. I do want to mention that Demi Moore's character, Samantha, is acting a damn she's, fool from the minute Chrissy's water break. Oh my gosh. In, in the back of the limo, Demi Moore's face, like her whole acting in that is amazing. <laughs> she is just like, I don't know what the hell to do. I, I am out of my element here and I'm freaking out a little bit. And Roberta is just like, she's so chill. She's like, she's having the time of her life driving this, this limo. I love when she goes, Chrissy, there's your uncle. Oh wait, no, that's not your uncle. <laughs> like she's just living it up. And um, TV is just chill as well. And then um, when they get to the hospital, Samantha is still losing her, her crap. The only time that Chrissy curses in this whole movie is during the scene when she's giving yes. birth and she says S H I T loudly. And finally, the husband comes in. More is his name Morty? What is his name? Morty. Morton. 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 And he comes in and she, he's, she's like, Come look at our child. So now she has no, a daughter. He said, Am I too late? Teeny says, No. I'm like, Yes. The baby's out of her. Yes, you're too late. Well, okay, the- can we backtrack to the fact that she's like, oh, it's the head, and Samantha leans down and looks at her vagina <laughs> and then goes, is it supposed to look like that? Yeah. <laughs> Literally, why I will never then- do birth photography right there. Yeah, I. And then she. <laughs> Uh, Chrissy screaming, get it out of me, get it out of me. And yes, Sam's yes. going, get it out of me. <laughs> yeah, she's having all the emotions and oh, Warren finally comes her. and he pushes his glasses up and says, yes, dear. And that's the callback from that Earlier. scene when they're at playing softball. And you realize that without them saying it, that Chrissy has married the dork it's just so sweet but I'm like I'll be honest the real love story here is between Chrissy and Roberta yeah yes. just the way that she looks at her while she's holding her baby and they're like she's like thank you and she's like she, they just mouth thank you and yeah. love you and I'm like that is a love story for the ages like that yes. is friendship that is right or die I, I feel like, like awesome they don't talk enough about, they don't do it enough in movies of just a life partnership that you have with your friends, your girlfriend. Yes. And I think- They have to make it, they have to make it romantic or into like a yeah. different level of intimacy. And I'm like, yeah, but we all have those people. We all do. Yeah. That's why I love that movie. I love you, man, because it yes. shows friendship for, you know, I think misogyny does call, cause males to not be able to have the same kind of levels of friendship that women have. Yeah. Um, and I think it's beautiful. I love it. And then we see 
um, some neighborhood kids, second and second of two people of color in the whole movie mm. is a little girl playing with a group of kids and she she's a little black girl and that's an hour and 32 minutes into the movie we had nine minutes left in the movie and that's including the credits yeah I'm not surprised if you've seen <laughs> any other Marlene King shows <laughs> she don't do well for the colored so I'll just tell you that and then who climbed that ladder with the baby? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, I'm wondering if she had a bowl of cereal with the baby I'm, in my hands. I'm wondering if she had that one of those carrying things, the uh, jump, uh, you know, the things. I don't, I don't know. Like, did they lower the bassinet down and then like <laughs> pull it up? Yeah. That and baby. You just had a baby. Why are you climbing ladders? I don't know how she none got of her that hair works. curled, her makeup done. <laughs> yes. I'm like, man, I didn't even give birth and we got this baby in our house. And I'm like, I haven't gotten dressed in a week. Can we talk about I don't about remember her- if I put deodorant on. <laughs> I love Chrissy's like pink track suit situation. Yeah. I said, yes. I just love Chrissy. She is about it. That's when they have the discussion of maybe Samantha wears too much black <laughs> and she should integrate some color in her wardrobe and men all of pastels on a woman <laughs> and they talk about how sam has this fear of intimacy which i feel like the movie could have been a little bit better at exploring that yeah teeny said that she used to send a christmas card with cash to crazy pete every year and this past year it came back to her and and roberta confirms that crazy pete has passed away he lived a um, long time. He looked old before. Yeah. <laughs> that did anyone try to do the math on that? I was like, hold on. This don't seem right. This don't add up. But okay. You're like, that's fine. We're just gonna go with it. Yeah. <laughs> they play Red Rover at the end. And they also make a new pack that they would visit each other more often. Yeah, which I, I like. I and like then that. there's that symmetry of them playing Red Rover at the very end with the neighborhood kids, which is how the movie opens. All right. So did we miss any fun facts, Jackie? Um, Gabby Hoffman and Christina Ricci are uh, best friends in real life. Love it. Um, oh, there was one we didn't say. Thora oh, Birch didn't know how to ride a bike. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. This movie. <laughs> and then they gave her the bike with the thinnest wheels. I'm like, y'all are jacked up. <laughs> Watch like, this, Thora no. Birch. I'm Do like, she have- did it. She's over there dancing. I'm like, you killed it. All right, ladies. So Morgan, we'll start with you. What is your current version rating of this movie? I feel like it's still pretty high. Like I don't, I'm like, I I still watch it a lot. I've watched it four times in the last two months. So, (laughs) but it's not, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. I sound psychotic now. <laughs> no, not at all. There is no, this is a judgment free zone. It's my feel here. good movie. Judgment free zone. So it's one of those you can watch whenever you just like don't know what else to watch and you're still going to enjoy yourself. I'm like, we all need those movies in our lives. Well, then it sounds like you are definitely still on the would buy it, would buy it again track. <laughs> yes, that one. <laughs> Jackie? Well, please remember, this is a judgment-free zone. Uh-huh. I meant yes. that for our guests. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I think because I don't have the nostalgia mm-hmm. of it, yeah. um, it not being a favorite when I was in high school, um, it's still a two-day for me. Sorry, guys. Hey, it's still a two-day. <sighs> it ain't the same day. Yeah. It is not the same day. <laughs> I am going to go with the five-day rental because I haven't watched it as much as I used to. When did this come out? Was this middle? This was middle school for us. Yeah. 95. So that was eighth grade. Yeah. So I, I do have the nostalgia. It did not have a lot of representation, but I was used to that at that age anyways. Um, But the nostalgia of this being a Danielle and Christine, Danielle and my mom movie, it's a five-day rental for me. Nice. I love that. Oh, I guess I'm the only one that it slipped a little bit. That's fine. 
Well, we, we are really happy that you came on. You, the, Thank the you guys. Invitation is always open for you to come and do other movies with us. We would be glad to have you. And just thank you so much for being nice to two ladies on the internet. We really appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love what y'all are doing. It's one thank of those. You. It just warms my, my movie nerd loving heart. <laughs> it's, there's not enough of it, especially where it feels like you can just sit and chat with friends, even if you're just listening. Yeah. Like I said, I get dressed and I'm like, oh my gosh, what they put? I'm like, there's a new episode. Well, tell everybody again how to find you on social. Cause I'm telling you guys, if you're not following Morgan, you're gonna love it. It is a nostalgia bomb that you'll be obsessed with. Trust me. Oh, you guys are sweet. Well, you're always welcome to join us over there. We kind of have our little nostalgia club going on. My handle is at Morgan Bartell. And it's the same over on IG, um, definitely more popping over on TikTok. <laughs> but if you want to show my IG some love, like that's fine too. <laughs> definitely show her uh, Instagram some love too. I think I like your Instagram. I, I It's have more like no niche. I'm like, I can try. And then like two days later, I'm like, eh, I'm over <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm like, have one day where I'm like, I'm going to be really devoted to reels this week. I'll post one and then delete it. Oh no. <laughs> For all of our listeners, we're going to do our, our housekeeping. So one, if you have any fun thoughts, a movie suggestion, we got something wrong and you got to tell us about it. If you worked at a video store or Blockbuster, you want to tell us a story. We have a quick drop um, segment that we would like to share your thoughts. So Jackie, give them the number. Hit us at the quick drop 909-601-NMLF. Again, that's 909-601-6653. And for our international fans, because we found out this week, your your girls are international. Belgium, what's up? Australia. Number two in (laughs) Belgium for film reviews. Super excited. If you guys are international, you can hit up our Anchor account and leave us a voicemail there. Or you can just, you know, hit us up on social media. We are at No More Late Fees. You can direct message us. You can send a tweet, Instagram, whatever, a pigeon, whatever is going to be (laughs) easier for you. Um, We are happy to accept those messages. We also want to give a shout out again to our Patreon besties. Thank you so much for joining. And until next time, be kind and rewind. 